Hello, 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 everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, first of all, thanks, thank you for uh, joining us on the call tonight. This is the Brand Executive. And uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, we want to thank you for coming out for the first time. And for everyone who has joined us before and you're joining us again, we appreciate you coming out tonight as well. Um, we have an amazing call uh, lined up tonight with Mr. Alfred Edmund, Jr. Um, and, uh, and, and again, we're excited about what we have to share. So, uh, my name is AJ. I am the facilitator, um, and I will bring, um, the Mr. Steve Canal, the honor and the honored guest, um, Alfred up in just a second. Um, but we want to do, um, some house cleaning. And before we do that, we want to make sure I want to do a microphone check and make sure that Steve and Alfred are both live and available. So. Uh, Steve, if you can hear me, just um, go ahead and say yes or <laughs> say, hey, I can hear you, AJ. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. All right. Um, now for Alfred, Alfred, uh, if you can hear my voice, um, if you would um, just say, hey, AJ, I can hear you. I'm looking at, let's see if I can see it here. It says, uh, okay, so. Um, it'll take just a second here for us to get Alfred online. Alfred, if you would just type in on your keypad pound 105 pound uh, and you will be good to go. Um, and uh, in the meantime, uh, again, we want to welcome everybody out uh, to the call. And while we work out the, the technical, um, um, not even an issue, but just get, you know, get the code typed in, we'll get Alfred up in just a second. So. Uh, tell you what, everybody's on the call. Tell us where you're calling in from. AJ, can you yes. make sure that Alfred's not muted because he's on? Okay, let's, let's see. Let's hear him. Okay, so it's uh, it's saying that he is he, he it says he just has to enter the pin. Um, let's see, Alfred, if you can hear me, if you uh, press pound one zero five pound in your phone. Um, it will unmute your microphone. I can definitely see you here. Um, and I think we'll be good to go. So guys, we're just going to give it a few minutes here. Uh, and in the meantime, type in the chat window. So there should be a chat window to the right of your screen. If you would just type in the chat window, where are you calling from and how you found out about the brand executive uh, training again um, while we work through let's see while we work through our technical difficulties let's see I see Anita what's up Anita Charlotte Victoria what's up guys um, type in the chat window or raise your hand just to give us give us some feedback we, you know we do this for you guys hey Victoria uh, type in the chat window and tell us where you're calling in from let's see Charlotte from Kennesaw. What's up, Charlotte? Oh, that's Charlotte, Charlotte. Hey. Um, th that's exciting to have you on. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have? Victoria. Uh, I see Victoria's hands up. So um, tell you what, I'm going to unmute Victoria just for a second here. And Steve, if you are, is Albert able to join us yet? He said he's going to dial in so he can. Okay. Don't do it that way. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right. Okay, cool. So, again, this is um, welcome to the world of technology. This is um, a, a byproduct of, of, of using this platform. Sometimes we have hiccups in the beginning, but I guarantee, and we guarantee that by the end of it, it'll definitely be worth way more than you paid for it, <laughs> right? So, um, it's definitely worth your while. Um, these are some amazing calls every month. Uh, we we have you know such amazing guests that provide so much information. So cool. Um, and and while we get um, Alfred on the hey Alfred, it looks like you're there. Alfred, are you there? Can you hear me? What's up? How y'all doing? Good, brother. How you doing? I'm great. Good. Absolutely. Okay. Bingo. So we're we are in business. That's my <laughs> my word for today is bingo. But um, we are in business. It looks like. So uh, again, thank you guys so much. And what we do in the beginning is we like to do um, some, some what we like to call house cleaning. Uh, and, and what does that mean? So number one, tell us where you're from, how you heard about the call, 
And then what is the biggest gift that you share from the world? Because having an expert on like Alfred, uh, if you tell us a little bit about you, then he can cater his message to speak to where you are in your life or in your business or in your relationship, because we're talking relationships and business tonight. So if you would type in the, in the chat window where you are in, in business, uh, any questions, we want those to start flowing right now. Uh, and, and how you heard about the call, because we definitely want to um, uh, continue to use, um, understand where people are finding out about us. Is that cool? Is that cool with y'all? I'm going to, I'm just going to randomly unmute somebody if that's cool. So let's see here. We got uh, attendee Charlotte. Let's see if we can get, um... okay, we have Windsor. Windsor, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Windsor, how are you? Doing good. How y'all doing? Hey, Windsor. <laughs> Hello. Cool. I had so, to sign in. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, Windsor, um, a few questions. Number one, where are you from? Number two, how did you hear about the caller? Number three, what is the biggest gift that you share with the world? And I'm going to add a bonus in there. Um, where are you in your business uh, and in your relationship as it relates to business? I think that's very important for tonight. Well, guys, I, I learned of the call um, when you all did it with uh, Munson a few couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm calling in from New York City in Harlem, um, Strivers Road. I uh, go between uh, New York and Dallas, Texas. I, um, let's see, I got the email, of course, to remind me of the call tonight. So that's why I called in. The biggest gift that I share would be marketing. Um, just uh, had an opportunity to put a uh, live cast uh, show together um, that we're doing with Cadillac. We just did it at the Cadillac house in Soho and we launched it and um, started off with a young lady um, that is uh, with two Juilliard grads with Amber Pickens and Corey Hawkins who's up for the uh, Tony. So my biggest gift would be my mind for marketing and creating promotions. Um, and Cadillac like, likes it, and so we're getting ready to make this thing even bigger at the American Black Film Festival in Miami. Congratulations. Absolutely. I'll see you there. I'll That's see you at the festival. All right. See you there. I'll be looking for you. Yep, don't act like you don't know her, brother. I won't. <laughs> Kick back and chat. So we'll be in the Cadillac Lounge with Kick Back and Chat with Amber Pickens. Okay. Love it. Love it. So thank you. Thank you so much um, for uh, chiming in, especially being put on the spot, Windsor. Um, we, let's see. We have Charlotte. Charlotte heard about the call via the email. I love it. All right. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and move forward because we did lose a few minutes at the beginning. Um, just house cleaning at the very beginning. So um, share. I want you guys to pull out your phones because we want you to be very interactive during this call. So take a picture of the screen. Every, you know, as we go through the slides, um, share that on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we want you to use two hashtags tonight. One is the brand executive and one is hashtag grown zone, hashtag the brand executive, hashtag grown, uh, grown zone. Also, we want you to follow uh, Steve Canal at Steve Canal at AJ Joyner. That's me and at Alfred Edmund Jr. Uh, and, and again, we're going to be fielding your questions from Facebook and here in the chat window. Okay. Um, and so without further ado, I am going to move it over to Mr. Steve Canal. Uh, Steve, uh, it's in your court, brother. AJ, thank you. Um, everybody want to thank you all for being on the call tonight. Um, we all have very busy lives, um, but we're very thankful and grateful for, for, for those who take what they do serious. And when there's an opportunity to tap into, tap into some minds, that are willing to share experiences and insight on how to better yourself and your brand and your business, um, you know, it, it's it's a, a great step towards um, reaching your goals. So we want to thank you for being on tonight. Um, little known fact, um, I usually talk about this, but I've been fortunate enough um, to do events in every state in the country. So when we talk about your receipts and things that you've done within your life to be able to talk about certain things, I've been able to produce events in every state in the United States. Um, I've also produced events um, in other countries as well. 
So having that insight on the way people think, um, that's my sociology background from Fordham University, um, being able to put strategies together, that's also my background from Fordham University as well, for my business management um, courses that I took <laughs> um, and, and getting my education there. So um, from there, I was, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I just always want to share that little known fact of being able to do events in every state in the country to be able to package some insights and some data to be able to share that. Hey, Steve. Yes, Alfred. Even North Dakota and South Dakota? Even North Dakota and South Dakota. Wow. Very nice places, <laughs> Very nice places. Montana, Utah, all of it. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am impressed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, when you talk about footprint, um, you know, I spend my days, you know, helping people, you know, experience beer in a different way. Um, and that's through Miller Coors and being an innovator for Miller Coors and developing national programs for that big machine, that big brand. Um, I've developed national award-winning programs for Coors Light, for Miller Light, for Blue Moon, um, some of which Alfred has been a huge part of as well. Um, so... You know, I always want to talk about that. Um, Allstate um, was one of my biggest clients when I went from, you know, college to in an ag small agency to having my own company, my own agency. And Allstate was my first big client. Um, in the U.S. Army, you know, when I first graduated college, um, after Tommy Hilfiger, I was able to produce and work on some big um, programming for the United States Army, which was huge for me. And then the transition right now, which is um, the founder and, you know, of the brand executive, which is being the CEO of your own brand, you know, taking a hold of your personal brand or your, 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 your business um, and taking the proper steps to make sure you can see it scale and grow. Um, and that's what the brand executive is about. The brand executive isn't me, it's all of us. You know, it's who we are as individuals, doing everything that we can to um, be great, you know. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, you know, that I always say is, you only live once, so why not be great? Um, and that's what the brand executive is about. Um, and then, uh, Alfred, you know, um, <laughs> you and I go, you know, uh, we go back a little bit. Um, and I've been fortunate enough, um, you know, to get some great insight from you and grow as an individual. But I wanted to take this time for you to share a little, a little known fact about yourself. Um, I think I know what it is, but I want to see if, if this is what you say for a little known fact about yourself. Well, so most people who follow me on social media um, know that I'm really big into health, fitness, nutrition, um, not only as a, kind of a cosmetic thing, but because it's, it's a form of wealth building. It extends your earning power, your earning years, your peak performance years. So both from a spiritual, financial, and emotional standpoint, as well as physical, I am deep into um, fitness. In fact, I just came from the gym right before I came to do, do this webinar. Um, <laughs> what a lot of people don't know is that I competed as an amateur bodybuilder in competition for about four years from 1999 to 2002 as a natural bodybuilder, no steroids. I um, never won a show, but I collected about 10 trophies. So <laughs> I take it really seriously. And, and in fact, this week I start training for the first competition I've done in 15 years. There's a show in September here in New Jersey, um, and I made up my mind that I'm going to take my shot. It'll be my first time competing in the 50-plus master's class because I'm 57. Wow. So, yeah, oh, wow. yeah. So I'm going to be real, real beast mode for the next few months. <laughs> Don't get in my way. That's all I'm saying. Alfred, I saw you flexing on social media, but I thought that was just for likes. But you're actually training. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm training. I, I, I pretty much stay pretty fit year round, even when I'm not, you know, comp you know, have been competing. But I kind of stay in semi competition, um, you know, shape most of the time. Um, my body fat hasn't gone above. 15% for most of the last uh, 20 years. But you got to kind of cut that even more when you want to compete. So I got to get down to like 7% somehow. And so you got to really watch your diet and your training. And, and uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, it's just another, another challenge. I like challenges. Uh, it kind of motivates you, uh, keeps, keeps you on your toes, and uh, keeps you 
in a growth mode, and I believe in just staying in growth mode. And that that's really awesome. Um, congrats on that, and good luck. Um, Thank you. That's that's real commitment. Um, before before we move on, and you know, I also wanted to get an idea um, of your footprint for for the the people on the call as well, just so they can hear a little bit about your receipts. You know, because some some people might know you for Grown Zone, you know, and some people might know a little bit of your history prior to that. So, um, AJ, if you go on to the next slide, um, we we put up some some items that we we believe are bigger part and a part of your footprint, being Black Enterprise, your recently released book that we'll, we'll talk about, um, and just the Grown Zone as a whole, being a founder and a co-author of the book. Well, um, as you said, uh, Black Enterprise has been a, a huge part of my life. Um, I'm actually in my 31st year. I celebrated my 30th anniversary at the company on March 4th. So I'm in my 31st year at the company. I'm currently Senior Vice President and Executive Editor at Large but I spent 13 years as editor-in-chief of the magazine, um, two plus years as editor-in-chief of the website, about two years as chief content officer, um, and I've done a variety of things um, over my time at the company. I still love working there. Um, now I kind of do whatever I need to do to help move the ball forward on behalf of the company. Um, but yeah, and I'm a 30-year award-winning veteran, business journalist, entrepreneur expert, um, personal finance expert. I also host um, a syndicated radio show for American Urban Radio Networks, a feature called Money Matters. It's a daily radio feature on personal finance um, advice and topics. So that's one part of my footprint. Um, the other, is, like you said, is, is I'm an author with my wife and business partner, um, Zara Green, and our book, Loving in the Grown Zone, a five-star Amazon-rated uh, book on relationships and, and how to pursue healthy relationships, um, which, which is a product of the Grown Zone, which you see the, the brand um, at the, the lower footprint, which kind of brings all of that together. Um, my, my wife and I have a company called A to Z Personal Growth Enterprises that houses um, ZaraGreen.com, Zara Green, your consigliere, which is one business that she has, which is on personal growth and, and um, individual ab individuality advocacy um, and coaching and training to, from that standpoint. And then the Grown Zone is our, our, joint, our joint business effort, which really focuses on relationship, healthy relationship decision-making, relationship education, um, and as we'll get into deeper into this webinar, how that relates to success in every other area of your life. It's, there's a lot more to it than just, you know, hurt feelings and lonely nights and romantic evenings, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot more at risk, and we, we take major risks with our lives, and in this case with our businesses, when we don't get the proper education in pursuit of relationships. Right, and that's perfect segue into today's topic um, again thank you everybody who's joined and those who you know just getting on um, tonight we're going to be talking about protecting your business and brand in romantic relationships um, and this is something that um, when when you, if you follow Alfred um, and his wife Zara um, they're a prime example of what that is you know being able to manage both but also be very loving and have a lot of energy around each other. You know, I've been fortunate enough to be around them both. Um, and you see the magic when you're around them. Um, so, Thank you. you know, that. I'm excited to, to learn more um, about this topic and, you know, of course, talk about a little bit of my experience as well, um, but getting it from the master um, himself. Um, but, Alfred, before we go into um, the presentation, I had a question. Um, going off of what you were talking about with, um, you know, being able to train and doing something that you're pa passionate about and, and love. Um, can you talk a little bit or touch a little bit on the importance of having that balance of doing something that you're truly passionate about and love um, and can be a hobby and um, <clears throat> your professional career? Because a lot of times people don't find time for that. They don't have the balance. It's just work, 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 work. And they forget the other part, you know, part of their life, which is appreciating and enjoying this gift that we have, which is life. Um, so, is there any anything that you could share, just covering that a little bit? Well, the the foundation of my personal philosophy, and certainly the foundation of of, of Zara and my's approach to both life and business, is that the foundation is self love. Um, it is your responsibility to give yourself the things that you need to be healthy and alive and joyful and 
and to have fun and, and to really be at your best. Unfortunately, depending on our cultural backgrounds, we're kind of told that we're supposed to give it all to everyone else and then somehow survive on the leftovers. And, as, and what happens is people burn out, people break down, people abuse people and things in order to cope with the stress and the pressure and the, and, and the, the other um, kinds of suffering that happens when you are operating on empty all the time. Um, both Zara Green's your consigliere, her business, her business under the um, agency personal growth umbrella, as well as our joint venture with Grown Zone, focuses on the foundation is self love, self knowledge, understanding what you need and what you want, and putting that first, so that you can be most fruitful, most productive, and then the overflow is your service and gift to others, whether it's family, community, church, friends, business, job, whatever. Uh, so you're not going to be able to excel um, over time if you neglect what you need to be at your best. And, and I tell people selfishness is not self-love. Um, neglect, self-neglect is selfish. Self-love is not selfish. Right. So I don't miss my gym workouts, dude. That, <laughs> everybody knows that's a non-negotiable. That's what I do for Alfred. But as a result of that, I'm healthier, I'm stronger, I manage stress better. I'm, I'm more available for my wife. I'm more available for my job. I'm more available for the things that I need to do because I am op operating at my happiest and at, and at my best um, at all times. But that doesn't happen if you do everything for everyone else first and then leave yourself last. You get the leftovers and you always fall short. Yes. Um, and for those who are listening, please, you know, feel free to take down notes. Feel free to, you know, post something on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, um, just letting people know, you know, the knowledge and information you're getting from these calls, you know, because we feed off your energy. The more that we get back, the more we're going to put out and the more we're going to do these webinars and these calls and have amazing people on to be able to share that, that insight. Um, so please, you know, make sure you take screenshot, you know, post and let people know and use the hashtag, the brand executive, and hashtag grown zone so people know what's going on tonight. Share that wealth. Um, again, you know, just to, to feed off what Alfred just said, if you don't, if you're not functioning in a way where mentally you're in a good space um, and physically um, you're putting yourself in a good space, it's going to be hard to enjoy the fruits of your labor. You're going to work, 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 and please, 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 and making everybody else be in a better position that you're going to be left with nothing but wondering where life went. You're going to look back, and you're going to, there are going to be a lot of regrets, and you don't want to do that. You know, when you take care of yourself and put yourself in a good mental space, and that's the people around you, friends, relationships, um, colleagues, the, if you allow them to put you in a negative space, it's going to be hard for you to grow as an individual and give maximum output. To, to be great. So take care of self um, and the things that we're going to be talking about tonight. Take it serious, you know, and you don't need to implement it all because, you you know, one way to eat out, you just one bite, of, bite at a time with the elephant. You can't just consume it all at once. So it's going to be a lot of information you're going to digest and take on, but take one action item and put systems in place to reach your goals. Um, so implement at least one, one item first and then next week maybe do something else or next month do something else that you've learned tonight um, and be great. Um, and with that, um, we'll be going into protecting your business and brand in romantic relationships. And we're going to turn it over to Alfred. All right. Hey, Jay. So this is the idea I want people to start out with, and this is what I've learned both from experience as well as more than 30 years now of covering, writing about, interviewing, um, reporting on successful and unsuccessful entrepreneurs and executives and other professionals. The single biggest determinant of long-term business and financial success is is the quality of the decisions that you make in your relationships, especially your intimate relationships. Now, if you Google business and relationships, most of what you'll find will be about how um, starting a business will, will put a strain on your relationship. So most of it is about how do you protect your relationship once you become an entrepreneur. 
what is neglected um, and what we focus on in the grown zone, you can go to grownzone.com to learn more, is that if your personal relationships are a mess, if your intimate romantic life is a mess, it will undermine your business success. The foundation of your success is not business and impersonal. The, the more healthy the relationship you engage in in your personal life, the more stable an environment that makes for you to be able to focus on your business success. And so one of the things that I've learned over the years is that when a business suddenly fails, a fortune is suddenly lost, or a career is suddenly derailed, it is almost never the result of a business, career, or financial decision. Now what happens is, us in the business media and in the news media in general, we report on the outcome. We'll report that the business failed. We won't report that the business failed because the CEO took her eye off the ball because she was dealing with a domestic violence issue at home and therefore her judgment in making business decisions was compromised. We won't report on that because one, we may not be able to approve it, two, it's personal, and three, there may be some legal issues around even saying that without being able to get that, that um, corroborated um, by, by sources. So again, that's an example where we know what happened, the business suddenly went off the rails, but what's not talked about is the decisions that the CEO made in her personal life that undermined her ability to lead that business. I've seen this hundreds, if not thousands of times over my 30 years um, as a business and financial journalist. And it's, again, it's, it's something that most of us know about or we know somebody in our own lives um, who's an example of that, somebody we worked for, somebody who worked for us, a colleague, a coworker, a fellow entrepreneur, but what happens is nobody talks about it. So the point of this session and the point of the grown zone is to get help for people to make better relationship decisions in this case so they can be, really succeed in other areas of their life. Uh, excuse me, am I controlling the slide? Just, I just want to make sure I'm not. No, a, uh, AJ's going to control this Okay, yeah. so, so we're, you're here. doing good. Yeah. I was I was just on mute, Alfred, um, and I just wanted to give you time to expound on what you were saying. So, oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. So here's what I want people to recognize: there is a direct and measurable correlation between the choices you make in pursuit of sex, love, and intimate relationships, and your career, business, and financial success, including the valuation and perception of your personal brand. Now, keep in mind, your brand is not what you say it is. Your brand is what other people say it is when you're not listening, when you're not in the room, when you're not present. So you can say that your, your, um, your, your brand is that you're a successful, in-control entrepreneur that has a great track record of delivering results. That's what you can say. But your brand, if you're not careful, could be that's that dude who thinks he's still a frat boy in college when it comes to how he deals with women. And while he may be a smart entrepreneur, his brand is compromised by how messy his life is. Um, I actually know a person, I, you know, I always have to change the names to protect the guilty and the innocent, but I know somebody who had to really uh, work with us in the grown zone to change the way he approached um, how he acted when he met women because he didn't realize the damage he was doing to his ability to represent himself and his company. So you got to understand that correlation um, so you can, you can, um, make decisions that not only um, help you succeed in business, but help you not to put at risk those things that you have already established. Um, I was just on uh, MSNBC's Your Business a couple of weeks ago where we did a whole segment on this topic. And we talked about the different things that happen with entrepreneurs when they either make poor decisions uh, because they're in love or they make poor decisions to try to please someone that they're in love with. Examples include putting um, a person in charge of a big part of the business, not because they're qualified to do it, but because that's my sweetheart and I want him to feel like he's, he's important to me. So I'm going to put him in a, in a role that he's not really qualified for and hope that the business can survive. Again, something I've seen over and over and over again. So we can go to the next slide. So it's important to understand, as I said earlier, your personal life and relationships are the foundation of your business and professional success, not the other way around. Unfortunately, most of us have been taught the opposite, that if you achieve your professional and financial goals, you get your business established, 
then once you get all that right, you are automatically positioned to have successful, healthy, and fulfilling personal relationships. But because we believe that false notion, our businesses and our business success is consistently threatened or undermined by our poor decisions and in personal, including intimate relationships. So we're talking about everything from uh, uh, um, dating someone who has extremely expensive tastes, and in order to keep up with their demand, uh, you start drawing um, funds from your business in order to finance the lifestyle that he wants. Um, we're talking about every, you know, um, getting involved with someone who is actually either verbally, financially, emotionally, or physically abusive, and then get into a situation where you can't, you feel like you can't tell anybody because you have a certain high profile in your industry or in your in your profession. So you try to balance it out and and just deal with it. And meanwhile, you don't think your slip is showing, but it's actually showing. People are noticing it. Now, people won't say anything. This is that threat to your business, career, and financial success that no one talks about, but everybody sees. So one of the things we do with Grown Zone Relationship Education, my wife and I, is we actually have courses and seminars for mostly entrepreneurs and high-level executives and, and, and multi-degree professionals to come to us, and we give them a framework for decision-making as they decide how and who to introduce into their lives and into their businesses if they're an entrepreneur, so they can avoid putting those critical things at risk. Um, hey, Alfred, this is uh, AJ. Can I jump in with a question here? Absolutely. Okay, so so uh, two things. Um, number one, um, how can a person, um, a small business owner who is establishing themselves, um, and, you know, in the beginning, you're doing a lot of work to, uh, you know, number one, keep your clients happy, uh, number two, grow your business, and there are times when you tend to overextend yourself or you may have to put people in um, roles just because of the lack of um, people that are available <laughs> for a particular price. Um, how do you protect your slip from showing? Is um, what you were saying earlier when you know when you're you think you're doing the best that you can, but people are seeing the flaws in what you're doing. How can you protect yourself as a business owner with limited resources? Well, when it comes to your being an entrepreneur and your relationship choices. Mm -hmm. The key is to be realistic about, one, whether you're really ready for the additional responsibility mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. vetting someone and, and committing to an intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. what, what we usually see is that entrepreneurs, and, and not just entrepreneurs, but in this case we're talking about entrepreneurs, commit too quickly. They feel that they don't have enough time to do due diligence on, on a given love interest that, that they're attracted to because they're obviously they're busy with their business. And then they end up bonding with someone prematurely. What do I mean by bonding? Mm -hmm. There are four principal ways that we bond with other human beings, especially in intimate relationships. Your body, obviously sexually. Financially, with your money. Access to your home, or in this case, access to your business. And emotional access. Any one of those four things, and usually it's a combination of those four, in effect brings that person into your business. I don't mean just your company, your business. I mean your personal business. They have a profound impact on your life. That can provide a huge distraction to your ability to run your company effectively, a huge distraction to making good decisions. So what's important and what we coach all of our clients is that you should not surrender those access to those four things early in a relationship, even though society and everyone that we've all been taught if you see that right person and she looks right and she, you know, she has everything that you like, you think you like in a person, just go for it and surrender one or all four of those things. And, and it, it's the same regardless of gender. So what we stress is that if you're an entrepreneur, you should be approaching relationships the same way, hopefully, I mean, they don't all do, a single parent would approach a new relationship if they were trying to think of who was safe to be around their child. They would, they would think twice about who do I expose my child to, who do I bring around my child. I need to make sure this person is safe for me and my child before I integrate them into my life. I advise entrepreneurs to have that same attitude. When you meet that gorgeous guy at the club and he finds out that you're running a multi-million dollar company, 
you need to know who that dude is before you allow him to ingratiate himself into the financials and other details of your business. Um, and I've seen so many businesses get compromised because people do just the opposite. And it's finding out who that person is and not their representative. So that's going to take digging a little bit deeper to fully understand and grasp who this individual is and believe them by their actions and not their words. You hit the nail right on the head, Steve. I mean, people, you know, there's that old question, how long, I mean, we've heard about the 90-day rule and how many dates and or how much money has someone spent before they're supposed to get access to me intimately. And we tell people it's not how long, it's what you know about the person. Um, one of the posts that, that we have at GrownZone.com um, is the six things you should know about a person before you give access to your body, your money, your heart, or your home. Um, we actually have an e-book um, that's also available, and we'll, we'll share that link um, after the chat as well on, on Twitter and on social media. That there's an e-book called The 13 Things You Should Know Before You Allow Access to Those Four Things. Now, if you can thoroughly you know, learn those 13 things in nine months, then you know the person well enough to make a decision. If it takes longer, it takes longer. If it takes shorter, it takes shorter. It's not how long, it's what you know. So you're right, Steve. It's not how long, it's what do you really know about the person and how much of it can you confirm over time by both observation and investigation. That means you don't just take their word for it just because they said it. But again, we're taught if we're in love, if we feel it, if she's hot, if he's sexy, if I feel, you know, sparks and butterflies, then I should just go for it and take their word for it. I should trust them. You should start at zero trust and make people earn the way to 100, not start at 100 and then watch them <laughs> slowly betray your trust and, and, and until they become show themselves to be untrustworthy, and then you, you endure damage and, and other negative results to yourself, and in this case, to your business as a result. Mm. The other thing I want people to understand, and if you're an entrepreneur, you should know this. It should come naturally to you, but often things that we would never do under normal circumstances, we do when we are uh, really attracted to someone or we think we're in love. We forget that all of our choices in general and as entrepreneurs have legal, business, and financial implications, not just personal and emotional implications. That's why you have to go to court to get a divorce, not to go to church to get a divorce. You may have gotten married in the church, but it's a legal contract. <laughs> so to get out of it, you have to go to court. So just as you wouldn't merge with another company, you wouldn't put together a business partnership with someone else without doing the due diligence and making sure that you are both sides are protecting themselves, are clear on how the operation is going to go forward, as clear on, on whether the terms of dissolution of the partnership, you shouldn't do that with a romantic relationship either. And I'm not just talking about marriage. If you're going to commit to a long-term romantic relationship, an intimate relationship, then there should be some due diligence that takes place in advance of the bonding of those four things. Here's an important figure that we, we share with our clients um, on a regular basis. The cost of one single failed marriage cycle from courtship through divorce can easily exceed $100,000 per person in a relationship. And if you're a high-earning entrepreneur, if you're a high-earning professional, I mean, you've read articles about pro athletes, CEOs, corporate executives who go through very hotly contested divorces, that $100,000 can balloon to $100 million very, very easily. So again, the time to invest on the front end is before, which is what we offer with relationship education, a, a $8,000 or a $5,000, $10,000 investment on the front end to come up with a framework for how you approach these things is a great bargain compared to the $100,000 or the $1 million or the $10 million you could endure in cost um, if you just go with what everybody tell, tells you to do, which is kind of just go for it and take your chances and, you know, love conquers all and time heals and all of those things that we're told but the statistics do not support. Achieving um, business, professional, and financial success does not make you less vulnerable to costly relationship decisions. It makes you more vulnerable. The reason why we make this point is because people, when people think of 
um, messy personal lives and messy relationships. The stereotype is to think of the, you know, the poor person, the middle income person, the hood rat, the ghetto, you know, you think, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, uh, all, all those terms we use to describe people who are less educated, less successful in business, less successful professionally. We, we happen to believe as a society that the better educated you are, the more successful you are, the more attractive you are, if you're talking about celebrities and Hollywood stars, that somehow that automatically makes them more effective in decision-making in relationships and less vulnerable to bad decisions or the results and the, 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 the cost of bad decisions, when exactly the opposite is true. Um, one of the examples that we point to in our, in our book, Loving in the Grown Zone, and it's not to pick on her, but it's someone like Halle Berry, a gorgeous woman, a smart woman, a successful in her profession, yet that didn't translate to successful relationship decisions by her own admission. So we have to really w recognize that as successful business people, we can kind of get caught up in our own success and not realize what we don't know. And, and um, many of our clients are people who have um, been through the battles. Maybe they got one divorce under their belt, two divorces under their belt, lost a lot of money, lost a lot of peace of mind, lost a lot in terms of their emotional health, and now they're like, I give up. I need, a, I need a framework for approaching this because I do want a healthy relationship. Maybe I do want to get married again, but I do not want to risk what I've risked um, in the past um, in terms of my own vulnerability as a successful person. The more successful you are, the more you're going to attract people who want a part of that success, and many of them don't have your best interest at heart, but they know how to pretend they do. Um, wow. So we have feedback from Charlotte. Uh, she's saying, thank you so much for this straight talk. Um, it's direct. Uh, she likes it. And I definitely think it's what we need to hear. So, wow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move forward yeah. in the slide. Straight talk is all we do in the grown zone. When you see people talk about <laughs> straight, no chaser, um, yeah. we don't call it the grown zone for nothing. Um, it's grown, it's direct, and we get into the real um, both fin measurable financial costs, measurable emotional costs um, of doing what we're taught to do. We're taught to just go for it, take a chance. What the heck? The best way to get over one person is to get under, get under another. You've heard all those different things that we've heard from, whether it's fairy tales that we were, especially women, were exposed to growing up as girls, um, that their Prince Charming is going to come and just make everything all right, um, and that until they find that person, they're not complete as human beings and they're not capable. Um, just to give you an example, there's a there's a, a entrepreneur, a client that we've had, um, who's doing much better now. But she suffered because no matter how successful she was as an entrepreneur, in the back of her mind, she felt like she wasn't successful because she didn't have a man. And as a result, she constantly compromised her business because she she commit to these relationships. And we knew every two or three years she was going to show up at a conference with a different quote unquote fiance. And, and it was this, this thing that she had to get past that said, I am not a complete successful person as a woman um, unless I have a dude on my arm. And we had to really work on her foundation of those beliefs and, under, and, and undo those beliefs so she could say, I would choose a partner who's healthy for me, but I'm not just going to have someone up in my life and up in my business, in her case, literally, in the case of one of her, her um, paramours, who almost ruined her business because she, she put him in charge of the finances to make him feel good, and he almost ruined the business. But everybody, including her mother, endorsed that because <laughs> her mother was one of the people that didn't think she was successful unless she had a man. So these are the very direct issues that we address. The business, career, and financial risks of poor relationship choices. This is not just about hurt feelings, lonely nights, I can't get a date, I need a man. This is the, the, the implications for us, and especially if we have children, for our children, are just, just overwhelming. And again, I've seen so many businesses be sabotaged because entrepreneurs are conducting their personal lives in ways that put their businesses at risk. All right, um, I have another question now. <laughs> and I'm just thinking back over you know, uh, business uh, friendships um, and 
So as a as a friend or you know someone on the outside that's not necessarily involved in that relationship, uh, a lot of times when you see um, people making decisions that you may say uh, to yourself is not the best decision for them, and it's based on emotion and and, and you know how they feel in the moment, uh, but you're not that person and you're not the lonely person so you can see it a little more clearly um, and you know I've been on both sides right where you advise someone and you say hey you know maybe you should consider this because something just doesn't smell right or you know whatever that the case may be um, and then that can cause people to you know react in different ways right so it can they can go inward or closer to that person or, you know, in less less likely cases, they can take a step back and maybe look at the whole thing. How do you approach that, number one? And then how, on the other side, how do you deal with that if that person does withdraw from you as the friend because, um, you know, they may feel like you're, you don't understand or you don't see what they see or you're hating? Well, let me, let me take it from the, the, the friend side. And I've been on that side, I, you mm-hmm. know. I, I didn't I didn't come through this without mistakes. So I'm twice divorced, and with my second marriage, after the marriage failed, many of my good friends, um, you know, came to me and family members as well. Was like, I tried to warn you, or I wanted to say something, but I didn't want you to think I was, uh, you know, not happy for you, et cetera, et cetera. And so one of the things, and actually I had an interesting Facebook discussion earlier today uh, on this this very topic about whether you would be in the wedding of a person who you thought was making a mistake by marrying someone. And I said unequivocally, I might, I might attend the wedding if invited, but I would not be a groomsman in a, in a wedding where I thought the person was entering a, a relationship that would do them harm. Um, and it, but most of us, you know, most people said, oh, if my, that's my friend and if that's what she wants to do, even though I think it's horrible for her, I'm going to be there for her. And, and I'm, my definition of being there is a lot different than it was uh, for me, you know, 20 years ago. Um, now, that said, the ultimate responsibility for those decisions is not the friend. So you may say mm-hmm. something as a friend or you may not. Mm-hmm. Whether you do or you don't, it's not your responsibility. The outcome is not your fault or your responsibility. This is why we focus our attention on the person. Because just the way you as a friend might be telling them one thing, their mama might be telling them something else. And a lot of the bad relationship advice we get is from the people who really love us and care for us. So, example, the, the entrepreneurial female that I talked about earlier, she, her, her, the biggest voice she heard in her head was her mother asking her every time she came home, if, no matter what she said she did with sales that year, oh, mama, we, we signed this million-dollar contract. Oh, mama, we got $15 million in sales this year. Oh, mama, we just um, entered a new market. No matter what she said to her mother, her mother's thing was, yeah, but when are you going to give me some grandchildren? So there are a number of influences around us, some good and some not so good, that will influence our decision-making in relationships. This is why you have to have your own framework. This is why our book, Loving in the Grown Zone, and, and one of our most popular um, um, packages that we have is called Successful Single Living for High Achievers. It gives you a framework to follow so that no matter how you are emotionally feeling at the time, because right after you fall in love with somebody, the first two years, you are technically crazy. I mean, this is biologically proven. <laughs> uh, your, 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 your brain chemistry is operating off kilter for the roughly the first two years after you, quote, unquote, fall in love with someone. So... Since you already know your judgment is going to be compromised, you can't make those decisions on the fly. What you need is to have a set of ground rules for how you're going to approach um, your relationship so that no matter how you feel, there are certain things you do and there are certain things you don't do. And if you stick to that framework, the truth will come out. The truth will come out without you risking money, body, heart, and home. And if the truth comes out and the person is the wonderful person you thought they were when you fell in love, great. Go forward, be happy. But if, in at least half the cases, if not more, you find out over time that the person is not exactly who you thought they were, not exactly who they said they were, or they're exactly who they said they were, but they're not healthy for you. 
I mean, that's the standard in the grown zone. It's not good, bad, right, wrong, moral, immoral, godly, ungodly. Our standard is healthy. A person can be a very nice person and not healthy for you. A person could be a very good person and not healthy for you as an entrepreneur or healthy for you as a person or healthy you, for you as a single parent. So the, the idea is not to rely on your friends and your mama and your cousins and your frat brother and, and what you saw on TV and what you saw on Real Housewives and what Wendy Williams said and, and all these sources, what the, the song said and what the movie said, but to have a proven measurable framework of decision making in your approach to relationships so that you can navigate all these conflicting messages um, that both men and women are dealing with so, and come out with proven successful outcomes and that's what we do in the grown zone. We can go to the next slide if you're ready. Yep. So I, already, I kind of already made this point but I'll just repeat it. Excelling in your business and professional life doesn't automatically make you more proficient when it comes to making smart, healthy relationship decisions. I am personally living proof of that. I have been successful academically and business-wise and financially nearly all of my adult life. I'm a very smart individual, if I do say so myself. My career track record, my professional track record, my academic track record says that I am a very smart individual. The mistake that I made was thinking that because I was professionally and in, in, in financially and business-wise successful, that that automatically translated to me making smart relationship decisions. And it couldn't be further from the truth, speaking of the twice-divorced person who never intended to ever divorce. What we teach in the grown zone is the same way you had to invest in education, training, and coaching to excel in your business or your profession. You have to invest in training, coaching, and education for how do you conduct your personal life. That's why we created Grown Zone Relationship Education. Um, think about it as, as using the analogy of driving. Okay, You are born with the capacity to love, and you are born with the desire to be loved. That is natural, and it is just the way what it means to be human. You are also born with the capacity to drive a car. But... Just because you are born with the capacity to drive the car doesn't mean I should hand you keys without you taking lessons, without you, you know, being coached by a driver's instructor, without you reading the manual about what the rules of the road are. If I just handed you the keys with no education, no training, and no coaching, you'd kill yourself and probably could take a few other people with you along the way. But we do the exact same thing when we take, in terms of what we're taught with relationships. Somewhere around 14 or 15, um, you know, at, at, at the earliest, or 18, or 21, or whatever we think um, qualifies as adulthood, we are told, hey, follow your heart. Go for it. Do what you got to do. You'll figure it out. And what we end up in, most of us, <laughs> very quickly, is a series of relationship wrecks. Those wrecks produce uh, unplanned for children. Those wrecks produce... Um, emotionally, physically, financially violent relationships. They produce um, relationships of infidelity. They produce relationships of disrespect. And damage is done. These relationship wrecks do damage not only to the individuals in the relationships, but often to the, the communities connected to them and our society as a whole. The argument we're making is that the same way you decided that I want to be, for example, a, a, a digital marketing professional, yeah, you learn some of this stuff on your own by trial and error. But if you're really excelling at your profession, you are, you are learning from the best, you are studying, you're, you're getting coaches, you're getting teaching, you're getting instructors, you're getting certification, you're getting degrees, so that you can excel at your profession. Our argument is that you, in order to excel at your relationships, you need education, training, and coaching. It doesn't happen automatically. And let me give you another analogy. Serena Williams is the best tennis player in the world. Any argument? <laughs> no, no, no. Male or female? I will say that. She still has a coach. She mm -hmm. still has training. When she comes back from having this baby, she's going to have to learn everything all over again because her body's going to be different. Her reaction times are going to be different. She's the best tennis player in the world. And the person coaching her, by the way, could not beat her in tennis. But he knows the sport well enough to watch how she's doing what she's doing, 
to help communicate to her how she needs to adjust her game so that she can go get back to being number one like she never left. And the, the, the thing that we provide, Zara and I in particular with the Grown Zone, is helping people to see what they can't see, to, to understand the, the patterns of behaviors that they're repeating that they don't even know they're repeating, getting the same results. They don't know why they're getting the same results. They don't know why they keep dating the same dude over and over again. He just has a different name. <laughs> or they keep marrying somebody and it's turning out the same way over and over again because they can't see it. You can't see what you're doing. So again, investing in training, education, and coaching is just as critical to your ability to make effective personal relationship choices as it is for your ability to make financial, career, and business choices. Um, so we have a question. I'm, wow, this is actually a, quite a question. It's a great question. So here's what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, Alfred. Uh, if it's okay, I will unmute Charlotte and allow her to ask her question. Okay. Okay. So, Charlotte, I have uh, unmuted the microphone on your side. I mean, on my side. So, if you would, on your end, let's see, unmute Charlotte. If you would, on your side, uh, connect to audio. Unmute it on your side, and we'll go ahead and take your question live. Hey, Charlotte, can you hear me? Uh, you, okay, so there's a green, uh, I'm, I mean, sorry, there's an orange microphone with a line through it. Uh, if you would press that orange microphone, uh, the microphone will turn green, or actually it's red or orange, but if you would press it, it would turn green, and then you can speak. Let's see. You got it? Uh, let's see, unmute it. Okay, so I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, here's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and read the question here. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. He said earlier. Okay, so Alfred, um, you said earlier that certain people who are successful and attractive are vulnerable to people who do not have their best interests in, in line. My question is, what advice would you give to females who are approached by men who start off discussing business uh, but use it as a guise to less honorable intentions. Well, here, here's, here's the challenge, which is why we tell people that you, it takes time, observation, and investigation. Predators and nice guys, I'm using guys in the case of for Charlotte's question, look exactly alike. They sound alike. They, 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 you can't look at a guy and tell that he's really... Um, really trying to get at you because he's trying to get, get involved in your money or trying to get a way to exploit your body or trying to get control of your life or trying to manipulate you or punish you or abuse you. You can't tell by looking. So the only way to tell who's who is by observation, investigation over time. The thing we tell people all the time, time is your friend, and anybody who tells you otherwise is not your friend. So, unless the person is obviously a creep, up front and, and they mistreat you and, 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 uh, and, and uh, disrespect you up front, and by the way, as Maya Angelou says, when a person shows you who, are, who they are, believe them the first time. That's the other thing we do. We are attracted to someone, they show you a red flag, and you're like, ah, uh, that, that, you know, they didn't really mean that. You know, you, you focus all on their good attributes, and you just, just, you know, you dismiss their the red flag. Never ignore red flags. It doesn't necessarily mean you should cut them off, but you definitely should pump the brakes to find out what that red flag is saying to you. So my larger point is that wolves dress as sheep when they want to take advantage of you. One of the um, topics I cover for Black Enterprise on a regular basis is um, different forms of romance scams. There are people, male and female, who the way they exploit people is by either by pretending to be in love with them. And if you don't take the time to separate the wolves from the sheep, you're not going to be able to tell from looking. There's not going to be a certain things that they say. It'll come out over time as you watch, observe, and wait. And people say, well, what do you do in the meantime? You enjoy the pleasure of their company. And they enjoy the pleasure of your company. 
In fact, a big sign that the person is with you for the wrong reason is when the pleasure of your company is not enough. If they're like, oh, I've been dating you for five months, you still haven't let me into your apartment. Or I've been dating you for three months and you still haven't let me into your bed. All of those are signals that the pleasure of your company is not enough. If the pleasure of your company is not enough, that's already a sign that the person's in a relationship with you or pursuing a relationship with you for the wrong reason. So, I, I mean, I hope that addresses your question. There's no fast way to tell a wolf from a sheep. The only way to tell a wolf from the sheep is to give it time because a person who is pretending to be something they're not can't do it indefinitely. Sooner or later, the the, the, the signs and the truth is going to come out. What happens is we're taught to jump in so fast that by the time the sheep's skin falls off the wolf, it's too late. We're being devoured. One of the things that we cover both in our book and in the grown zone is the difference between relationship attractors and relationship sustainers. The three big attractors that, for, that, that, that motivate most of us to commit to relationships very quickly is physical attraction, sexual attraction, and financial attraction, meaning they, they, they got a lot of money. So if they're rich, sexy, and fine, we're taught, whether we're male or female, go for it. Just give it up. Give it up. Get up. Knock them down fast. You better give it up before somebody else does. You better give it to them before somebody else does. Girl, you better get it. Dude, you don't turn that down. See how fine she is? We're taught that. The problem with those attractors and the other attractors that we identify in our book, Loving in the Grown Zone, is that attractors are either easily faked or they're subject to change. So even if he is making half a million dollars a year, even if he does have six-pack abs, even if he is good-looking at age 30, he may not have that money you know, two years from now, he may not have six-pack abs five years from now, and he may not be the best-looking dude in the world 10 years from now. If that's why you're with him, the relationship is going to, going to fail. But the other thing is that attractors can be easily faked. I mean, you know, we all know women in particular who were told he said he was single, he said he didn't have any kids, and he said he had a job. And I believed him. And after I got pregnant, after we got committed emotionally, after I let him ruin my credit, I found out he wasn't single. He was underemployed or unemployed, and he has children. The only difference between you knowing that, you know, um, before you got involved or you knowing that after you got involved is how long you, you let, how much time you let go by before you allowed yourself to bond with that person physically, financially, emotionally, and in terms of access to your home or your access to their home. Love it. And we have another question, Alfred, uh, from my team. Uh, is it okay if we go ahead and take his question? Sure. Okay, so, uh, Mateen, if you will, we'll go ahead and take your question live. Um, Mateen, are you there? Mateen? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, hey how's it going, brother? How you doing? Yes. Good, good. Uh, good. How you doing? Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Where are, you, where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from... Uh, East Brunswick, New Jersey. Cool. All right. You're 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 live with Edmund. I mean, I'm sorry, with Alfred. Go ahead. All right. Uh, what's going on, Alfred? How's it going? Hey, man. Um, okay. Uh, my question is, um, let's say if you're from a certain environment, let's say, like, if you're in the inner city. I'm, I live in Jersey, but I'm originally from, um, from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. And you're happen to be one of those people that actually made it from that environment but the problem is is that you're used to you know certain types of females that are you know that are in the same environment that you're in and my question is you know how if you build your business how do you protect yourself from not you know falling into those those pitfalls in that relate, you know, in that relationship, because it's it's kind of hard to, you know, to to kind of get out of that element that you're kind of element that you're used to. So how do you protect yourself from that? Well, what we focus on in, in our in our coaching packages, one of the things, and we actually do address it in our book, Loving the Grown Zone, as well, is the idea of standards and boundaries. Standards 
is what you must have in a healthy relationship. And boundaries is what you refuse to accept in a relationship. A lot of times we go through life, you know, and we go through making decisions, and we don't have a clear, de- clearly defined definition of either of those two things. If you have right. boundaries and standards for what constitutes a healthy relationship for you, especially as an entrepreneur, then it won't matter whether the woman comes from your hood, comes from another state, <laughs> comes from another country, because your, your litmus test is no longer what I'm used to. Your litmus test is, are my boundaries and standards being honored? Is this healthy for me based on these boundaries and standards I set for myself? Because the sad truth is much of what we believed or what we were taught to believe from what, we, what our culture is, whether our culture is based on family, neighborhood, race, nationality, whatever we define as our culture um, may have served us once upon a time when we were four or when we were 12 or when we were 17 but it won't serve us forever. So part of the work that my wife does is helping people to unpack their beliefs so they can uproot the ones that don't serve them anymore and, 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 and pull those out of their, their belief systems and replace that with the ones that do. So I'm going to give you a very graphic example. Um, Mateen, are you, are you black? Yes, I am. Okay, so I didn't want to just jump to that conclusion. Most of us <laughs> brothers depending on your generation and where you come from, we're taught that you weren't a man if you turned down sex. I know by the time I was 11, my uncles, my mother's boyfriend, who was like a father figure to me, when he sat me down to tell me what it was like to be a man, one of, it, one of them was, if you, you never turn down sex, and you never tell anybody you turned down sex, because that's not what brothers do. That's not what men do. You're supposed to get all the sex you can get and, it, and, and if she doesn't give it to you, pretend, tell everybody she did. And, and, and you know, I'm going to say something that's, that's fairly crude, but I'm, going to, I'm doing this to make a point. Um, we were told right. that, that uh, you even had sex with the double baggers. <laughs> and that was a girl who was so unattractive that you wore a bag on your head too and clay service fell off. This was the kind of advice I was getting from grown <laughs> men when I was 11 and 12 years old. And I know I'm not the only one. Lots of men, and certainly lots of black men, were told that. Now, think of all the unhealthy outcomes that come as a result of that. So what I had to do, and I, fortunately I did it fairly early in my life, by the time I was a late teen, I rejected that belief system, even though that was the culture I came from. That was what I was taught. That everybody around me, including my best friends, operated that way. Now, I didn't know what I knew now. I don't know why. I, I, probably it's my mother's influence that made me kind of look at, look at things differently. But the bottom line is I had to uproot that belief in order to have different outcomes, to attract different people, to choose different people, and to have a different standard for who I would let into my life and who I wouldn't let into my life. So, you know, I always tell people your culture, and the base word of culture is cult, if you're not careful, you'll get trapped by your culture. But your culture is where your roots are. You're not supposed to grow toward your roots. You're supposed to grow away from your roots. Your culture is supposed to nurture you, but not limit you. So, you know, it doesn't mean you you, you ignore your culture or you dismiss your culture, but you keep those aspects of your culture that serve you, and you reject those that are unhealthy for you. And the truth is, if you're a successful person, and certainly if you're a successful black person, you're going to go places, do things, and face choices that your culture knows nothing about, that your culture can't. My mother loves me, and she's very you know, proud of my success, but I can barely explain to her what I've been doing for a living for the last four years because it's so beyond her cultural understanding. You're going to have to deal with that, too, as a successful person, and that means a lot of what you accepted from women and what you, a lot of what women accepted from you you're going to have to make some different decisions if you want different outcomes. I understand. I hope that was helpful. It was very helpful. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Thank you, Mateen. Um, Alfred? Here's the deal. One of the things that we focus on with our clients is what happens if they don't change anything. 
what happens if you just keep going the way it's going? And this is especially with our clients who come to us because they are either stuck, settling, or suffering in their relationships, whether they're single, whether they're in a relationship, whether they're married, whether they're divorced, it doesn't matter. If you're stuck, settling, or suffering in your relationships, um, those are the people that tend to come to us for help. If you don't do anything, failure to pursue relationship education will not only sabotage your future success, it will put whatever success you've already achieved at risk. We all know somebody who we look at them and we're like, why aren't they kicking butt? Why aren't they blowing up? They're smart. They're hardworking. They're, 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 they're resourceful, yet they keep triggering and, and sabotaging their own success. If we want to look at obvious examples, look at, and I name names when it comes to celebrities, look at uh, athletes who you would think, you know, whether it's in the Vander Holyfield or, or, or any of the athletes who have made a bunch of money in their professional career but end up broke and bankrupt because of the way they handle their personal relationship choices. Think of politicians like Elliot Spitzer, for those of us in the New York area, who is a successful law and order governor who could have been a presidential candidate for all we know, but had a down low uh, habit of high-end high call girls. That he knew was wrong and he knew was illegal, but it still sabotaged his career success. Think of singers, think of actors, think of business owners, think of corporate executives. Here's what we know in the business world. When somebody's a highly placed executive in a corporation and suddenly they resign so they can spend more time with their family, most of us know, and often it will come out in the news, that's basically code for they did something crazy in their personal life and to save face and to protect the reputation of the company it was better for them to resign than for it to come out. And if we know, if we're honest with the people we know in our own circles, our own profession, we know when a person puts out a story that's acceptable, you know, as, in terms of the public face, and then what's really going on behind closed doors. Now, because we don't want to violate the personal privacy of a person, or we don't want to them to retaliate against us for putting their business out in the street. We all pretend that the emperor has no clothes, you know, actually has clothes on. We all pretend we don't see what we see. We pretend we don't know what we know. We may gossip a little bit at, at parties, and we may, you know, it may be on the grapevine. But we pretend that the story that's being told is the real story, which is fine, except it often prevents people from getting the help that they need. I had lunch with a good friend of mine in Houston. Um, again, I won't go into a lot of details because I don't want you know want to reveal her identity. But she told me the story of how she spent 15 years putting a great face on her success as a professional, and no one knew but her daughter that she was enduring um, intimate partner violence for all those years because she wanted to protect her business reputation. And some people could tell; they could see the red flags but they don't say anything. So again, it is on you to pursue the relationship education you need to have so that you can maximize your success, your future success, and avoid putting your current success, however you measure it, at risk. By my own count, I've had two failed marriages, and the second one was by far the most financially, emotionally, spiritually destructive experience. By my own count, I, I, I lost $350,000 in failed relationship choices just from those two marriages, not counting the relationships in between, not to mention the emotional um, toll it takes, not to mention the impact on your job performance. Or, and if you're the entrepreneur, your job is the most important job in the company. These are things that only now, through research that we're doing in the grown zone and now other um, institutions, universities are, are starting to measure that your ability and decision making in relationships will undermine your success and sabotage what you're doing or prevent future success. And what we are trying to tell people to do, what we do in the grown zone, is to help people either get out in front of that and prevent <laughs> a lot of the craziness, or if you've endured some of the craziness, hey, 
learn from us so we can help you get on a different track and, and help you to have successful, healthy relationships of honor, esteem, and respect. Yes, that was, Alfred, that was truly amazing, brother. Um, I know that based off the questions and, and the engagement and some of the posts that we've been getting that, you know, people have been able to take away a lot um, from today's webinar. And we truly appreciate your time, one, um, but we plan on um, covering a couple other things um, in a couple slides. But before we get there, I just wanted to leave um, everybody with three rules or emotional rules when it comes to business and personal. Um, one, <clears throat> watch out for mental terrorists. Say that again, dude. You know, um, yeah, we call them emotional terrorists, but it's the same thing. Yes, emotional terrorists. You know, good business feeds off good energy. You know, and negative people or mental terrorists um, can destroy that energy. So you need to be cautious. You know, there are enough people, enough positive people in the world that there's really no need to waste your valuable time or energy managing that that terrorism from, you know, a mental or, or, or healthy um, perspective. You know, there's absolutely no need. There, there are too many people in this world with positive energy to have to deal with that. Um, and if I can add, Steve, not even for so-called love. Right. If it's not healthy for you, it's not love, no matter how a person makes you feel. If it's not healthy for you, it's not love. You know, and, and, and Alfred hit it on the head earlier, have self-love to understand that you're, you're worth more than having to go through that. You know, and, and that's just the relationship side. On the business side, sometimes, you know, even the high performers, the people that are performing very well for you, um, or, you know, if you're in a corporate space, people you work with or people you manage, maybe they're not a good fit either. You know, they can be manipulative, they can be combative, just negative forces in the office. And, you know, you need to really take a deep look into the situation to see if it's worth it, you know? Um, and that's the same thing for love or in the office. Um, another one is the end game. You know, those who succeed in life um, and business usually keep their eye on the big picture. This means letting go of all the little petty things that come along each and every day because they're going to come. Life isn't perfect, you know? Uh, and, but when you have a bigger picture, when you keep that end goal at the top of your mind, it's easier to navigate. And sometimes, you know, I'll say it in a relationship, negotiate with a difficult, you know, relationship or a client. You know, because you're focusing your energy on what's most important and not getting sidetracked by little annoyances and putting, putting out little fires every day. You know, and that's the same for relationships. You know, if it's a long-term committed partnership um, and that's your, your journey and your priority, then you're less likely to focus on the small things. But still, you still need to pay attention to the small things because if they're repetitive and continue to happen, then that's something you need to watch out for because it could become a bigger issue. But if you have that long game in mind, that long game and that goal that you're trying to accomplish and achieve, understand that nothing, nobody and nothing is perfect. And there's a difference between little annoyances and somebody doing something that can be destruct, destructive um, and, a, and being a mental terrorist. So watch out for it. And the third was soul search, but, you know, Alfred covered that, you know, earlier. You know, that, that, that love, that self-love and loving yourself and looking deep and being true to yourself, you know, being able to answer questions about yourself to see if you're being real with the situation. You know, are you giving it a true, uh, true opportunity? If you're in a relationship, if you're in a marriage, are you really trying for it to be successful, you know? Or are you doing little things here and there or things here and there that are taking away from the, 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 the energy and the, um, you know, the, 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 the love and passion behind what the potential can be? You know, so be true to yourself. You go to the next slide, AJ. No, we're, we're over our time slot, so I want to make sure we cover some things. 
Um, you can go past the Q&A because we, we did that throughout. Um, now, what we usually do are book recos. Um, I know there's a third that Alfred had mentioned, but um, Alfred, you have two on here that we listed. Um, and I know you had one personally that you wanted to talk about as well. But um, Yeah, we'll real, real quick. Yeah. Yeah, real quick. Um, you heard me reference the book all during the course's webinar, Loving in the Grown Zone. Um, it, it's a book that's kind of foundational to our work. Um, it's by my wife, Zara Green, and I. Um, you can get it anywhere, hardcover, softcover, ebook, Amazon, you know, um, go to lovinginthegrownzone.com and it, you can have your pick about where you get the book from. The other thing is that I have a new ebook dropping July 4th. Um, we're offering it on a limited time only as a free ebook. It's called Buy Love, Get Trouble, Sell Love, Get Screwed. How Your Choices in Pursuit of Love, Sex, and Relationships Impacts Your Career, Business, and Financial Success. If you go to grownzone.com forward slash buy love, get trouble, you will be able to pre-order the book and be among the first people to get a copy of it when we release, when we release it on July 4th. And as Steve said, I'm, I'm recommending another book that I literally just finished reading about two weeks ago, Charlemagne the God, the radio personality, his new book, Black Privilege, is the real deal, especially if you want to read the story of someone who is fiercely loyal to his brand, even though it cost him along the way, um, it cost him dearly in many cases along the way, but he was willing to pay that price and ultimately emerged uh, very, very successful. Now, it's a raw, if you know Charlemagne the God, you know it's raw. <laughs> you know, you might need a parental advisory on that bad boy, but it's an excellent, excellent book. I highly recommend it, especially when you're talking about the context of um, your brand and what your brand is and your ability to really stick with that when a whole bunch of other people might try to get you to change it. Awesome. Um, so please, everybody, please take a screenshot of this and post it out and let people know about, you know, the, the, the mental food that you, you, you're learning today in these book recommendations. And book number two, um, The Mind of a Winner, the Power of Pro, uh, Playbook. Um, it's my book that's coming out in July. Um, about it. This is my baby I've been working on and I'm ready to share it with the world. Um, in the book, um, just to let you know, the Power Move Playbook, I have Damon John in the book, I have Barbara Corcoran in the book from Shark Tank, I have two shows in the book, I have Joe Anthony, who's a serial entrepreneur, I have Everett Taylor, who's considered a millennial genius from Forbes magazine, um, Swing Cash, two-time Olympic gold medalist um, champion, uh, Kenny the Jet Smith from Inside the NBA on CNC. We have Mary um, Skittle Seats, um, who's also an entrepreneur, who's a fashion influencer, who's done uh, four million um, with apparel. Um, and you can go on the Mind of a Winner Book dot com to pre-order. I have some cool items I'm giving away for pre-orders. Um, and this is this book. It's, it's not, you know, you can read everybody's bio, but there's a difference between reading a biography and learning how somebody was able to achieve and be successful in life. Throughout their failures and through their success, what were they thinking when they were able to accomplish this? And that's what this book is about. You're tapping into the mind of winners. Um, it's not something you can Google. It's not something, you know, you can just read off of a bio or an article. These are things that they're letting you know how they actually thought when you know Barbara, you know, became this uh, real estate mogul. How did what was she thinking when she became that? You know, and that's what you're going to get from the book. So I wanted to make sure we shared that because it's coming out in July. Super excited about it. Um, and you can go on the Mind of a Winner Book dot com. Pre-orders, um, and I appreciate everybody's support um, in this journey. AJ. Yes, yes. So uh, the book that I chose tonight is called "Be Obsessed or Be Average," and it's by uh, Grant Cardone, who's actually from Lake Charles, Louisiana, which is about an hour, uh, hour and a half from where I'm from in Louisiana. But the premise of the book is, um, you know, a lot of times we spend time in our head thinking about what other people think about us, right? So instead of us focusing on what it is that we want to accomplish, 
you know, we may have these goals, but we, we get in our head thinking, you know, and are they going to perceive me a certain way? And the time that we spend doing that is time that we can spend to uh, moving our goals forward. So the book is called Be Obsessed or Be Average. So it's talking about being obsessed in those times where you feel like you're in your head so that you don't become average because most people only talk about the things they want to accomplish versus going to accomplish them. So that is my book, Reco, for the evening. Um, Steve, and I'll turn it back over to you. Awesome. Um, again, we greatly appreciate every everybody's time this evening, um, being able to jump on the call and listen to this amazing webinar from Alfred um, and the work that myself and AJ, you know, to make sure these webinars take place every month, you know, to bring you heat so you can grow as an individual within your personal life, um, small business, or even relationships, as you see tonight. Um, it's about personal growth. It's about cutting that curve um, because you don't have to go through life experiencing all the hard bumps in order to grow. There are people who are out here who are willing to help. Um, there are people who are out here doing things like this to be able to put you in a position to grow so you don't have to get that hard bump um, on your road um, and, and on your journey um, to success. So thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Alfred, we, we greatly appreciate your time. Um, time is one of our most valuable assets, so we appreciate the entire hour and 30 minutes that you've dedicated <laughs> to tonight. Um, it's it's well, great. Absolutely, absolutely my pleasure. And again, if anybody has any other questions, um, I answer questions on Twitter in particular. So follow me at Alfred Edmund Jr. or Grown Zone, and we're there. We answer questions. We help people in any way we can. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for getting on tonight. Next month, July, we're going to have another special call. More information will come out um, in a week or so, um, so we can share that out with you. You can follow us on social media um, at AJ Joiner, um, at AJ Joiner, at Steve Canal, at the Brand Executive, or hashtag the Brand Executive for more information. And you can go www.thebrandexecutive.com to um, sign up to get all our monthly. Uh, information on our next calls and invited to our private Facebook group where you can answer any, ask any and all questions and, you know, we respond and get back to you. It's a great group. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night.